Hello, I'm Jackie Fox and welcome to Fox Talks. I usually choose my video topic based on discussions that I have related to things that are currently in the news. When I find that there seems to be a common misunderstanding, I search that topic and that research usually gives birth to a video topic. For the freedom of speech video, I started with Facebook bans on the grounds of hate speech. As a part of that research, I found a study relating to anti-immigrant hate in Germany. If you've already seen the freedom of speech video, I'm not going to go into that level of detail here, but I do want to restate that study for this video. What I found is that when they looked at the number of anti-immigrant posts that were posted to Facebook page for a German alt-right political party known in English as Alternatives for Germany, there ended up being a strong correlation between the frequency of their anti-immigrant posts and rises in hate crimes against immigrants in Germany. What makes this correlation even stronger is the fact that Germany has notoriously bad, at least according to this study, internet connection. And outages in small areas is relatively common. So they looked at the places that had internet outages and measured the level of anti-immigrant hate crimes that happened during those times, and they found that they dropped off quite significantly, pretty much reversing the correlation. They, they also, as a part of this research, found out that when there was a particularly impactful news story that many people on social media would take time away from that particular Facebook page, there tended to be a decrease in anti-immigrant crime. So between these three factors, it seems like one influential Facebook page has been spurring on a lot of anti-immigrant crimes, even without having to directly advocate for them. This relates to today's video because one thing that I wanted to look a bit deeper at that was in the news is the increase of hate crimes in Germany overall. Anti-Semitic incidents rose 19.6% to 1,799, and according to a police reporting, 89.1% of those involved far-right perpetrators. In the same period of time, xenophobic incidents, or anti-immigrant crime, rose 19.7% to 7,701 amid an overall uptick in hate crimes. First of all, that means that there is more than four times the number of anti-immigrant or xenophobic crimes than there are anti-Semitic crimes. And we can see from the previous study one of the reasons that that might be true and on the rise. But there's also been a recent increase in anti-Semitic crimes all over the world in the past few years, and this seems to have happened in Germany as well. And I have to wonder if there's a similar thing going on here, or... And is it the recent uptick in Nazi memes that are encouraging the rises in anti-Semitism? So, as a part of this video, I'm going to be looking at some statistics that I was given from uh, a, a polite German man who said that I was wrong to insist that Muslims weren't responsible for this. And we'll get into the data on those and figure out which one of us was right. Um, but another thing that I want to talk about is uh, hate crimes in the United States and what's happening here. So, yay, more hate crime video. I hope you guys like statistics because, boy, I found a lot of them. <laughs> So, first of all, uh, a couple of these sources that I'm going to be giving you in the, in the links down below are going to be German, but they translate pretty well with the exception of, like, graphs and images. Um, but I was able to get a pretty good idea of what was going on in them, and I think that you should be able to, too. They're, they're kind of long, um, but the summary of them is as follows. So, one of the first things that I learned from these sources is that there is reason to question the official police statistics that I quoted earlier and the strong correlation they make between anti-Semitic crime and far-right groups. There is some evidence to show that Muslim extremists within the country have co-opted both signs like the swastika and Heil Hitler salutes 
as a way of expressing their own anti-Semitism. And since the police always consider these acts to be far right in nature, no matter who is doing them, it's to a bit of a misrepresentation in the statistics. However, you could also argue that Islamic extremists are pretty far right themselves. So is it really that wrong to mislabel them or to label them as far right? Is it really mislabeling at all? But there is, of course, the perception, especially in Germany, of what alt-right means or far-right means. And, you know, we're talking about uh, essentially neo-Nazis. So the distinction that they're trying to make here is that um, these crimes may not be necessarily committed 89% uh, by neo-Nazis. But I think that saying that far-right perpetrators committed 89% of these is still fairly accurate. There's another study uh, that these articles pose that seems to contradict the findings of the police report. And in this study, they asked Jewish victims of hate crimes to report as much as they could about the perpetrators, with the most often quoted statistics from this report being that 81% of respondents involved in a violent crime said that the perpetrator was Muslim. First, since this is dependent on people's first-hand accounts, it's hard to say whether the people they identified as Muslims were actually Muslims, and not just immigrants in general that they assumed to be Muslim. They were, there was also only 16 respondents in the study that reported hate crimes that were violent, and only 13 of them identified the perpetrator as Muslim. So... Any interpretation of this study, at least as far as uh, trying to indicate that Muslim communities are committing all the violence, uh, should at very least be taken with a grain of salt. Uh, another thing that I noticed um, in that being the most often cited statistic, even though this study covered a lot more than just that, is that it seems like that correlation was only found strongly in violent crimes. So it doesn't sound like even this study says that Muslims are particularly involved in nonviolent hate crimes. There also seems to be a correlation between anti-Israel or pro-Palestinian rallies and an uptick in anti-Semitic crimes afterwards. We see that a lot with right-wing protests here in the States as well, and I have some data on that for us to go through a little bit later. So the second source that I got from this polite German fellow I went into a bit more detail, but unfortunately this was the one where I ran into the graphs that didn't automatically translate. Still, there was plenty of data in the text, so I did manage to get some takeaways from this. Uh, the first being that classical anti-Semitism is on the decrease, but that secondary anti-Semitism has increased. So w what what does that mean? What's classical anti-Semitism and what's... Um, secondary anti-Semitism. And I didn't really get a good definition for classical anti-Semitism. I guess that's just hating Jews for being Jews or something, or maybe for like conspiracy theories about money and power. I don't know. That sounds like traditional classic anti-Semitism to me. Um, but when they, they did describe what secondary anti-Semitism is, and this is, um, one of the trends that they've identified is that people are accusing Jews of trying to gain benefits from their place in the Holocaust. Um, I guess something like, you know, uh, they're claiming that they're trying to get reparations or something like that from their involvement in the Holocaust. Um, there's also a lot of Israeli anti-Semitism and uh, criticism of Israeli politics that goes hand in hand with media stereotypes and Nazi comparisons. Another indication is when Israeli politics is described as 
typically Jewish. Now, as for those things, I'm not sure that there's a direct link to Muslims because we see a lot of the same trends in the U.S. Again, I'll back that up in a minute. The source goes on to say that in a poll conducted by the Anti-Defamation League in 2015, at least 14% of Christians in Germany showed anti-Semitic inclinations. Among atheists, it was 20%. And in Muslims, the portion, according to scientists, was 56%. Considering geopolitical issues with Israel and the rising focus on Israel and anti-Semitism, you would expect this to mean that there were more Muslim anti-Semites than other groups. However, I took their percentage in the population and multiplied it with their percentage of anti-Semitism to give each group a weighted score between 0 and 10,000. Christians scored 70, uh, 798, atheists scored 740, while the Muslim community, community only scored 280, assuming that they commit crimes based on their anti-Semitism at similar levels, you would expect to see six times as much anti-Semitic crime from Christians and atheists as you would from the Muslims alone in Germany. And this is mainly due to their low concentration in the population. So this doesn't seem to be the cause of the nearly 20% increase, although it does seem like the influx of Muslim culture into Germany is changing the very way that Germans hate. I particularly like the conclusion of this article. And this is just a translation. Mind you, the original was in German, but not speaking German, I wouldn't know how to read that to you. At the same time, this is a chance. Because school education, according to the experts, can help against anti-Semitic attitudes. This also applies to better integration offers for young Muslims. Those who are marginalized often react by devaluing others. An important role can be played by the Muslim communities. Many of the expert group imams surveyed in the interviews. Anti-Semitism was not an expression of a closed and manifest ideology in their communities. Rather, it concerns unreflected anti-Semitic stereotypes or ideology fragments. Therefore, it is an opportunity to intervene in the awareness of the community members and to reduce prejudices. In particular, the equation between Jews and the state of Israel should be repealed. By the time I got to the third of the three articles presented, I had already seen a lot of the same baseline information before, but the last article really seemed... Uh, more to drive home the idea that an unknown amount of the police has reported anti-Semitic hate crimes could not could have been attributed to Muslim communities, but that the police didn't thoroughly investigate them and were prone to make the assumption that traditional far-right groups were behind it. After studying the data from these three articles, I've come to the conclusion that immigration alone is not responsible for the uptick in anti-Semitism, though it does seem to be changing the conversation about anti-Semitism to a more anti-Israel focus. Though, it's hard to say who might be co-opting who here. One of the big takeaways from reading these three accounts is how conflicted and flawed both sources of data are and whether that be from the police or from first-hand accounts of in the end i could only come to the conclusion that while the islamic community may be more violent in their anti-semitism it does not look like they would be responsible for more than about 14 to 15 percent of the anti-semitism going on in the country by the numbers and that that would not alone be able to represent the 20% uptick in Germany. Especially because not all of that immigration happened in just one year. I think it's important that we look at this data honestly and not try to let our preconceived notions affect the way that we view it. 
because that seems like it's the major problem on both sides while studying anti-Semitism in Germany. That being said, the anti-immigrant hate crimes are four to five times occur four to five times more often than anti-Semitic crime, and this is being primarily targeted at Muslim communities. As shown in our previous study, this is being bolstered primarily by alt-right groups like Alternatives for Germany, so even if Muslim immigrants are disproportionately represented in anti-Semitic crime, they are still a minority within hate crime in Germany overall, and overall things are being driven very much by alt-right hate groups. Yikes, guys. So, as it turned out, this video is running hella long in editing. So, I'm actually gonna just end the video right here while we're still talking about Germany. Just make a Germany exclusive video. The points that I promised I would connect to in America, you will be able to see in the next video, which will be coming out um, probably later this week. So, in the meantime, if you made it this far into the video... Hit that like button. I know you liked it if you watched this much of it, because otherwise, if you didn't like it, it it's kind of dry. Like, I don't know. Does my voice help you go to sleep? Like, what's going on here? Just, just hit the like button. Come on. Hit the like button. And, you know, maybe the subscribe button, too. But, uh, I'll see you beautiful motherfuckers later. Okay, so today we're going to do the second part of the hate speech in Germany and America duo, where we're going to look at America and I need to write a separate fucking script for this video, oh, 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 so that I can reference the two times in the previous video that I said that these statistics would come important later in America.